Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice intense maneuvering game between Alpha Zero and Stockfish. Uh, unlike a couple of uh, previous videos between Alpha Zero and Stockfish that were from the opening book uh, that was used in TCEC 2016, uh, this one does not contain any any prior opening knowledge and it is uh, everything just uh, you know play, play whatever you want. And it's interesting uh, for some reason Stockfish again goes for the Queen's Indian defense even though uh, it lost plenty of games to Alpha Zero already using the same defense. Uh, but regardless, it, I'm sure you're all going to enjoy the game as it features uh, a lot of things you can use in your own games. Uh, but before we check out the actual game, uh, I would like to th uh, take this opportunity to uh, invite all of you to a very nice story. Now, I was having a beer with my brother-in-law, uh, Yozarov, you might know him, he also runs a chess channel. Uh, as you can see, he is uh, currently at some 921 subscribers and uh, he told me uh, that he's preparing a very nice video about the outside past pawn. Now, there are a lot of videos already on YouTube regarding the outside pass pawn, uh, but he said that he, he's been studying the outside pass pawn intensely and that he's ready to share some very nice secrets uh, about the outside pass pawn, you know, how it could be a weakness, could be a strength, uh, and so on. So, uh, I invite you to check it out. Uh, I will put The first thing you will see in the description below will be a link to his channel, uh, so feel free to check it out, check out his content, and if you enjoy it, uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I thought, uh, as tomorrow is, uh, you know, Christmas, it would be a very nice Christmas present uh, to, uh, to sur surpass 1,000 subscribers uh, on, on such a day. And also today is uh, his wife's birthday, so feel free to congratulate him about that as well if you can spare a minute. Uh, that being said, let's check out our game. Uh, Alpha Zero has the white pieces and uh, we have D4 on the board. Knight to f6, c4, e6, and now comes knight to f3. And for some reason, Stockfish uh, doesn't know it's the latest trend to transpose into the queen's gambit declined. So b6, we have the queen's Indian defense uh, for, uh, I don't know, uh, for the, well, uh, <laughs> uh, considering they played probably millions of games, uh, this uh, is uh, a million time for, for Stockfish, but uh, we've seen already uh, at least 15 games where the Queen's Gambit decline, the, the Queen's Indian defense was played. Uh, G3, uh, we have Bishop to B7, think of doing the light square Bishop, as is uh, often the case here, Black wants to take control of the E4 square. Uh, bishop to g2, bishop to e7, this is all standard theory of the queen's Indian defense. Uh, knight to c3, and now comes castles. Uh, alpha also castles, we have knight to e4, uh, offering a trade of knights here. Uh, bishop to d2, and now comes d5. Sorry, not d6, uh, but d d5. And uh, this has all been played before, this is still considered standard book theory of the Queen's Indian defense. Uh, C captures on d5, E captures on d5, and here we have Queen to b3. Uh, this, for example, is a move uh, Vasily Ivanchuk played in 2015 in the World Rapid Championship against Anton Korobov, and uh, Korobov played knight captures on d2, and Korobov won a very nice game. Uh, Ivanchuk really attacked like a, like a madman, uh, but Korob Korobov defended properly and in the end won the game. I always say Korobov is really an amazing player, so whenever you get a chance to check out a game by Anton Korobov, you know, feel free to do it, you will not be sorry. Uh, but here uh, we have a new move by Stockfish, c5, and now we have a completely new game. c5 in this position has not been played before. Uh, and here Alpha goes bishop to f4, uh, basically saying that Korobov's knight captures on d2 was a good move as Alpha does not uh, allow this capture. Uh, we have knight to a6, Stockfish keeps developing, uh, perhaps this knight uh, can come to, 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 to b4 in the future, or, or perhaps, uh, let's say, c7, b5, and then, and then what not, depending on what, what alpha plays. Uh, rook f to d1, uh, and now comes c4, and this c4 is the most exciting moment in the game. Not the most exciting, but it's a really exciting moment, because it's really a committal move. Uh, for example, you could also capture here, but that doesn't really gain anything after knight captures. You just improve uh, the, the position of white's pieces, let's say captures, captures, and then bishop to f6, you uh, put the bishop on, on this very nice diagonal, white moves the queen, and still white will have... Uh, a, a very comfortable game here, so uh, you, you, we're gonna go with the old to take is a mistake, I, if you're not gaining anything. Stockfish instead plays c4, and this is a very committal move. Uh, yes, you have created a, a very strong c4 pawn, uh, but the base of the pawn chain, the d5 pawn, w is now very weak, and this is what alpha will use uh, as 
uh, as a like a homing beacon for <laughs> for the rest of the game and it's going to be very enjoyable uh, queen to c2 uh, we have knight to b4 attacking the queen once again queen c1 and now queen to d7 and here you see stockfish has a knight on b4 on e4 uh, stockfish still has the bishop pair the rooks are yet to be developed uh, wherever and uh, it seems uh, that stockfish gains a lot of space here also the pawn is uh, you know quite a nuisance here on c4 and alpha goes h4 and it really seems like yeah whenever there is like doubt or anything just push push h4 seems Levon Aronian was right all along uh, rook a to c8 stockfish keeps developing uh, at some point white might decide to challenge uh, black c4 pawn with would be three and uh, you know having a rook and c8 is always very nice uh, we have a3 attacking the knight here, knight captures on c3, b captures on c3, and now comes knight back to c6. So here we have a case of uh, white's c3 pawn being weak, but also black's d5 pawn is very weak. And it will be interesting to see how black will go about this uh, weak c3 pawn, and how alpha will deal with the weak d5 pawn. Uh, queen to b1. Uh, and okay, perhaps some ideas like queen to b5 offering a queen, tra queen trade are possible in the future. Uh, rook c to e8 now, the rook is no longer useful on the c file, and now comes rook to e1. Uh, perhaps alpha has some sorry ideas of pushing e4 in the future as both the queen and the rook are uh, controlling d4 square. Knight to a5, this b3 square would now be a very nice outpost for black's knight. Uh, but now comes a move that, uh, well... Seems like seems like an obvious move. Knight to g5. Yes, you are threatening checkmate, uh, and it seems like uh, a useless move. Of course, black will deal with this threat, but also you're forcing black to deal with it now. Uh, how you're gonna deal with it? Will you push g6? Will you push f5? Will you capture the knight here? If you capture the knight, uh, then you've just given up the bishop pair without really gaining anything. Not really something you want to do. Uh, perhaps ideas like king h2, bishop to h3 are coming and uh, white will control a lot of important squares. So here black deals with it with f5. Okay, you've closed this diagonal and now alpha goes back. Knight to f3. Uh, now the e5 square becomes a very, uh, you know, convenient. Uh, bishop to f6, uh, and now comes rook to a2. Uh, we have h6 by Al uh, by Stockfish, and now even a4. Uh, and okay, queen to e6, and now comes king to h2. Uh, a very nice idea. Uh, Alpha's plan here is to push h5 and create a very strong outpost for his knight uh, on g6. Uh, and it's very interesting. Now comes bishop to c8. The bishop is no longer useful on this uh, diagonal, as there's no pressure at the moment against the d5 pawn. Uh, but now comes rook to h1, uh, very nice move, knight to knight back to c6, and now comes h5. And here it's very interesting what happens if Stockfish decides to attack this pawn with, let's say, queen to f7. Uh, then bishop to d6 is very strong. You attack the rook, and now even though this comes with check, after the king moves, the queen is under attack. Queen has to move, and now you're just gonna uh, get rid of this uh, rook, and you rob the exchange, and you will have a much better game. So here, Stockfish first uh, plays king to h8, makes room for the rook on g8, so now bishop to d6 in the future, if the queen attacks the pawn, will not be such a problem. Uh, we have knight to g1, uh, a very nice move. Uh, the g6 square is a very nice outpost for white's knight. Uh, but if you play knight to h4, then black can eliminate it with the bishop. So white's plan is next, knight to g1 to h3, uh, then the dark square bishop will move from f4, then the knight comes to f4, then to g6, and then, hopefully, at some point, it will come to the very nice central square e5, if nothing uh, is traded by then. Uh, so, we have knight to g1, as planned. Queen to f7, attacking the pawn, but now comes bishop to f3. The knight just uh, freed uh, the f3 square for the white bishop, so now the bishop is guarded. Uh, we have rook back to d8, now taking away the d6 square from uh, the bishop, uh, and now comes knight to h3, as planned. King back to g8, uh, and now, as this bishop has to move to make uh, room for the knight, we notice this beautiful diagonal. Uh, so, what do you play here? Bishop to c1. The bishop is now ready to come to a3. Uh, rook f to e8. Uh, not allowing this uh, to come with an attack on the rook, uh, but also putting pressure against white e2 pawn. Uh, queen to b5 now, uh, a very nice maneuver with the queen as the knight on c6 is still unguarded. Uh, bishop to b7 defending and now comes rook to d1. Uh, we have knight to a5, again hoping to bring the knight over to b3, but now queen back to b1 as the f5 pawn is also unguarded. 
uh, bishop back to c8, defending here the pawn, and now comes knight to f4. So here you can see that white did all of this maneuvering with the knight. The knight was on f3, came to g1, came to h3, came to f4. Now it can come to g6. And uh, all of this without black actually making any progress, because there is no progress to be made. Uh, and this is what uh, fascinates me about this game so much, that when black pushed this pawn from c5 to c4, yes, uh, black said, now your c3 pawn is weak, uh, but it also made a very committal move that, uh, well, it, it's really not able to make any progress. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, a double-edged sword, this c4 move. Uh, bishop to g5 now, and now comes knight to g6. Of course, alpha does not allow this knight to be traded for the bishop. Bishop captures on c1, we have queen captures on c1, and now bishop to e6. Uh, putting more defense to the d5 pawn, and now finally comes knight to e5. So this is one ambitious knight, you know, traveling all the way from f3. Of course, it couldn't uh, go from f3 uh, to e5 immediately. Black would just capture it with the bishop. It required this uh, very nice journey, g1, h3, f4, g6, and only then after the dark square bishops are traded, and now alpha brings the knight over to e5, and now this, is, this becomes a monster knight. Uh, queen to c7, hopefully now this a5 knight can either be traded for this knight, or it will find some use on b3. Uh, rook to b2. Uh, now Alpha's plan is like we said from the beginning, Black pushed c4, uh, Alpha wants to make d5 a target, so Alpha is planning rook to b5 to actually attack it with the rook. Uh, we have knight back to b7, uh, and now comes rook to b5 as planned. Knight back to a5, Stockfish simply waits to see uh, what will happen, and now comes queen to f4. Uh, we have knight to b3, and now comes knight to g6, offering a queen trade. And here, Stockfish is not allowed to trade queens, because after knight captures on b4, uh, on f4, there's a triple attack against the d5 pawn. And uh, even if you play something like king f7, first uh, alpha will improve, e3, not allow e2 to stay a target, and then after any move black makes, uh, white will simply start grabbing material, captures, 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 and uh, with uh, being up a pawn in a better position, uh, alpha should win this game. So after knight to g6, we have queen to c6, uh, and now comes queen to e5. So slowly but surely alpha improves the position. And now you might say, okay, but w what if a6, doesn't that bother this rook? It doesn't seem like it's very comfortable there but yeah rook to b4 and there's really no way to further attack this rook you only have a light square bishop and the knight doesn't really have all that many ways to attack the rook if you attack it further rook b5 and again there will be so much pressure against this d5 pawn uh, the knight can come to f4 and then there will be uh, uh, the d5 pawn will be attacked four times so not really possible so after queen to e5 we have queen to d7 Simply waiting to see what happens. Also, the d5 pawn is nicely defended. Uh, we have e3, you know, taking care of any, any future weaknesses. Uh, knight back to a5, and now comes bishop to g2. Uh, perhaps uh, freeing the square f3 for the knight if needed. Uh, knight back to b7, and now comes rook to a1. Uh, king to h7, and now comes knight to f4. Uh, we have bishop to g8, and uh, now comes a move that alpha's been planning. It seems like an odd decision here, trapping your own queen like that, but uh, alpha has everything planned out. Rook captures on d5. And now you don't have the option of playing rook captures on e5, because rook captures on d7, rook captures, and then after pawn captures here, uh, the attack against the b7 knight and also this the threat of this pawn coming to e6 is too overwhelming for black to handle, uh, even though uh, the material is equal on the board. Uh, but now after you move the knight, let's say knight c5, bishop to h3 comes, there is no way to actually defend this as e6 is coming. So here you would have to play something like rook d2, but then bishop captures, king h8, uh, and now e6 will be... Uh, too, too great to stop. Even if you capture king g2, king g1 attacks the rook, uh, rook moves, now comes knight g6 check, king moves, knight here check, king moves, and now you simply push the pawn, the f7 is guarded by the knight, so no bishop to f7 is possible. Uh, you are unable to prevent this uh, pawn from queening, and uh, the game is over. Uh, so here, after rook captures on d5, you cannot capture the queen. Uh, you have to play bishop captures on d5, and this is what alpha had in mind. Uh, queen captures on d5, and again, if you capture, then bishop captures, you're just uh, going to lose more central pawns. Uh, so after queen captures on d5, we have knight to d6. But here, alpha finds a way to trade queens nevertheless. Uh, bishop to h3... Uh, putting pressure on the f5 pawn, 
rook to e7. Now this rook will at some point be able to come to c7 to defend the c4 pawn. Knight to g6 attacks the rook, rook to f7, and now knight to e5 attacks the queen and the rook, uh, but Stockfish has it all figured out. Queen to b7, now you cannot capture the rook as your queen on d5 is hanging, uh, but Alpha never intended to, to gain material equality, it just wanted to, uh, you know, sacrifice the exchange and have a lot of central pawns. Uh, bishop to g2 and now comes queen captures. Bishop captures on d5 attacking the rook and now comes rook to c7. So okay, the knight and bishop are attacking the c4 pawn but the knight and rook are also defending the c4 pawn so white cannot grab it just yet. And now comes king to g2. Uh, we have knight to e4 uh, going after the weak c3 pawn but alpha says no problem. Bishop captures, pawn captures and now comes f3. Pawn captures, king captures on f3, and now you see where alpha's compensation lies. Yes, Stockfish is up the exchange, but alpha has a very strong knight, and uh, the, the c3 pawn that's basically uh, the weakest uh, link in this pawn chain is guarded by Blackstone c4 pawn. So now all alpha has to do uh, is push, <laughs> uh, push two connected pass pawns. So that's uh, compensation enough for the exchange. Uh, rook to e7. Uh, we have knight to g6 attacking the rook, rook to b7, and now comes e4. As, of course, uh, like Josh Waitzkin always said, pass pawns must be pushed. Uh, we have b5, e captures on b5, rook captures on b5, and now comes knight to f4, uh, protecting the h5 pawn. Uh, rook to b3, and now comes knight to e2, protecting again the c3 pawn. Now you don't really gain anything by going after the pawn once again, because white can always prevent it with e5. So rook to a8, protecting the a7 pawn, but now e5. And now Stockfish starts pushing its own passed pawn. Uh, we have d5, pushing another passed pawn. A4, we have D6, A3, and now comes D7. And now you already have to start dealing with the past D7 pawn. King to G8, uh, we have Rook to D1, and now comes Rook B to B8. Uh, white simply pushes E6, we have King to e, King to F8, preparing King to E7, and if Black was uh, will be able to uh, play King E7, such a nice blockading move, then perhaps the black will still have drawing chances, but alpha doesn't allow it. Uh, there is one move that ends the game uh, on the spot. Alpha did play it, but uh, you know, feel free to pause the video uh, and try to find this move that alpha played. Uh, I will just uh, have a nice sip of my water here. So, uh, for those of you who were able to find it, congratulations, you are really, you know, uh, in for a wonderful Christmas, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move is, of course, knight to d4. Knight to f4 is also possible, but uh, then you, you just allow black to go to e7, uh, but knight to d4 doesn't allow it, because here, king to e7 is met with knight to c6. Check the, this fork uh, ends the game immediately. Uh, so, on the other hand, after knight to d4, which is the move alpha played, Stockfish resigned in this position, rather it failed to make a move in, in some reasonable time that it was allowed. Uh, but now, after you, any, anything you try, let's say a2, uh, still you get knight to c6, and now comes, uh, let's say you bring a queen into the game. Uh, it doesn't work because you capture, capture, and now after captures, there's no way to pre prevent queening. Uh, king e7, knight checks, king captures, and now uh, there's a queen brought into the game. And on the other hand, after knight to c6, if you don't start with bringing a queen into the game, let's say you try n rook to b1, which seems like an excellent move, you know. Uh, yeah, sure, you bring a queen, I'm just gonna grab it with my rook, and then I'm gonna queen this pawn. It doesn't work because it's actually a forced checkmate in two. Uh, you will simply bring, even a rook will suffice. Uh, this comes with check, black has to capture, there are no other moves, and after captures, this rook uh, delivers checkmate, as the knight and pawn are creating a wall here against the black king, as you can see here. So this would be checkmate, and the game, of course, would be over. But uh, Stockfish didn't bother. After knight to d4, uh, Stockfish fa uh, failed to make a move, and therefore it resigned. So uh, that's the game. I, I do hope you enjoyed it. A very nice uh, maneuvering game. Um, quite, quite, quite an enjoyable one, one. I hope you agree. Uh, and yeah, like I said, uh, the first thing you will see in below will be uh, a link to Yozarov's channel. Feel, feel free to check it out. 
uh, and you know do, do subscribe if you if you enjoy it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Martin Schwea, uh, Paul Hurst, Peter Rose, David Hill, and Sam Leonard for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Most likely on Christmas, I might even have a short stream uh, tomorrow morning. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'll, I'll definitely just uh, you know at least throw a puzzle or, or something uh, so so you know we have a a, a nice christmas video uh, but yeah thank you all uh, and uh, hopefully i will see you soon